today we're going to be working with, it really has become one of my favorite sets of the new, um, oops, <laughs> all my stuff stuck. Um, you got to be careful about those things. This stuff is really sticky now. Um, so anyway, we're going to be using Christmas season and then we're also going to be using the word set, a Christmas to remember that goes with that. And we're going to be using the coordinating dies. I hope you, um, if you don't have these, you can uh, use something similar that you have, or you can freehand um, your pine cones or whatever you want to do. But um, the actual card, oops, is here. And it's I think it's super cute, it's super simple, and it does what I love to do, and that is stamp. And then it's got a nice big greeting on the inside. So this is the classic traditional Christmas card. So let's get started. Okay, so you're gonna have um, a piece of, we're gonna have actually two, cause you're gonna make two of this design, two of another design, and two of a third design. So you'll have six cards in total. This one uses a red uh, cherry cobbler card base. I've also included um, two pieces of shimmer white paper and you're gonna put one on the inside for your greeting and then we're gonna do one on the outside. We're not gonna adhere it just yet. We're gonna go ahead and stamp it first. So, and um, then you're just gonna need a little bit of the ribbon that you're from your bolt and then I've included a little piece of uh, gold twine to um, add as a little accent and then you'll need some Stampin' Dimensionals and you'll need your pine cone die and your um, front greeting tis the season label punch out that is that came in your pack okay so let's get started I love 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 with this it was just a lot of fun so I'm gonna take the base this is the solid um, the more full filled in image we're gonna take that and we're gonna stamp that in our lighter color which is crumb cake and then we are gonna um, we're gonna stamp that in crumb cake and early espresso for the detail and then I'm gonna go ahead and set my blocks up for the pines I did this one actually think I had this one on the other I'm just going to stick that on the other side in case I want to use it and um, little tip you can use both sides of your blocks for your stamps and then on this last one I need the nice leafy leaves I'm not exactly sure what plant that is I think this is um, mistletoe but I'm not sure what this one is so we'll just call it a nice green leaf and we're gonna stamp first. Let's see, I think I'm gonna stamp my pine cone first. So what I'm gonna do, when you've got just the die and you're trying to get your image to go like right on top of that, um, I mean, you can do it like this and because it's clear, you're pretty guaranteed to get a pretty good um, stamped image. I can see that that's gonna fit perfectly. Uh, another option is to take this and actually lay it, ink your stamp up, and then lay it down like this, and then pull it off. I think I'm going to go this direction. Do that with crumb cake. And this is just inked up, not really um, stamped off or anything. I'm just going to lay it down. I'm just going to line it up the best I can here. Nice thing about um, photopolymer is that you can see where the ink has adhered to through your block, where it's adhered to the um, paper. So I've got a nice image there. And then I'm going to take the early espresso. that and then I'm just going to go on top again it's about an eighth of an inch in all the way around just press that down and these don't have to be perfect they're designed if they're off a little you're still going to get the um, 
you're going to get the effect of the two-step stamp and the dimension. So, um, you know, nature isn't perfect, so your stamping does not have to be perfect. That is a fact. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm just going to get these little pieces out of the way. Oh, I need one more block. And I'm going to get my Tis the Season stamp. These boogers are so sticky. All right, so I've got my Tis the Season. I'm just going to put this down. Now this is a little bit diff it's a little bit more difficult because you can't exactly see through the inked image, but um, so this one actually, I might it might be more. I might be more inclined to do it this way. So let's just, I'll just do this one that way so you can see. So you're just gonna lay it down. Press that across. How'd it do? Oh, look, see? Came out just right. See, I feel like I'm, you're seeing my stuff backwards. Okay, I want you to see it like that. Okay, so that's done. Those two pieces aside. Now, sometimes when you're stamping with photopolymer, it is a really, um, there. there is no, like with this rubber, with the red rubber, there's a cushion underneath the rubber. And you don't always get that, or I mean, obviously you don't get that with the photopolymer. So it can tend to not want to smush into the paper, like, this and so what we have is we have these stamping uh, mats and um, this is a kind of an old one I've used it for some pa paper piercing but I'm just gonna lay this down actually I'm gonna use this slide because it's not got the holes in it and I'm gonna lay my piece down if you don't want to get this um, yucky then you can take a piece of scrap paper I'm gonna use a piece of my this is a, a paper for our uh, Stamparatus. I'm just gonna lay it under here so that I don't get my mat all yucky. Okay, so I'm gonna take my shaded spruce and I'm gonna lay in where I want the shape of my card to be. And I want it to come down and kind of go this way. So I'm just gonna take ink off my polymer stamp now if you get this then you're gonna that helps you get a clear image and you'll notice that this stamp it has some areas that are taking the ink way light that is because this is um, I'm pretty sure this one is a hmm, what's it called um, I'll write it in the video when I'm done because I can't remember what it's called it's more detailed so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to, and I like to put my images, like my little um, stems into another uh, leaf so that it doesn't really show specifically. Um, let's see here. I'm going to put this side up. I'm just going to build this in and kind of stamp over because we're building a bit of a, um, kind of a wreath or a, a swag or a bow. Okay, so then I'm going to take my pine and I am going to stamp with old olive. And what you'll notice is that the um, leaf on this, what happens is that it, the greens kind of melt together. And they change a little bit. They don't have to be perfect. Sometimes I stamp off with the the olive. Okay, oh, I like that. I feel like I might need. Oh, I know what else I did forgot to do this. I'm going to go back and do stamp my pine cone. I 
I'm going to stamp one right here. I'm going to stamp one right here. I'm going to stamp one down here. Okay. Take an early espresso. And you'll notice that this is not going to look exactly like my sample, the first sample, because when I'm stamping, it just, I stamp organically in it. But it looks, it still looks like a natural swag or um, wreath. And then what I'm going to do is where I don't like the best, I'm just going to lay this on top and put my bow on. So because this is kind of muddy right here, so I'm going to just put that on. But before we do that, we are going to actually stamp some of the little dots. And I don't know if this is necessarily true to the flower or if there are berries in whatever imaginary leaves these are, but I am going to put some yellow in here because I just feel like whether it's lights or it's actual pepper berries or something. I just want a little bit of yellow in here. And I love this bumblebee. You can see. You could also put some red um, berries because that's going to obviously be like hollies. Or, um, you know, a lot of trees have red berries in the fall. In fact, do I want to do that? No, I'm going to stay true to my true to my image here. I'm going to put another little another pine cone or pine leaf right up here because I don't want that to be hanging berries out there. Do a little bit like that. I love it. I love stamping. This kind of stamping just, uh, this is why I love stamping. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals or whatever glue. You can use whatever glue you have. Okay, and I'm just going to take this. Tis the season. Actually, I'm going to put this on first, I think. a little wet. I'm going to try it a minute. If it gets too wet, sometimes your adhesive doesn't want to stick. See, I think I'm going to pull this down just a little bit on here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to take my scissors, cut an adhesive or a dimensional in half. here because I got a little smudges right there and then you're going to take um, whichever green that you were given in the you should have a little strip of um, decorative matte decorative dots and I'm just going to take the two smallest ones and lay those on the end and then I'm going to turn that over. I think I'm going to move this and it'll get more. I'm going to take my card base that we prepared earlier. Lay this down. Just like that. Now what we're going to do, well, I think I'll go ahead and stamp my saying on the inside. I'm using Love and Joy Come to You, and again, I'm going to just use this block. Ink that up. I'm just going to lay that down right in the center. Hmm. Yummy. And I will tell you, I, th I think um, I 
I use the um, shimmer paper on here because I just want you to see how beautiful that stamps with your words. I love writing on this paper. It just gives a little extra depth to whatever you're doing. Okay, and now we're going to put the ribbon on. And this is super easy because I'm just going to tie a little, um, let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to tie. What I did is I tied a bow as I wanted them. Kind of get my, actually I want my ends to be about the length of my bow. So you're going to have three, um, you're going to have three different Ends. So I'm going to take, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to cut this here and then I'm going to huh. I'm going to do the same thing over here. have my bow and see I got that a little too long so I'm gonna cut this off spread those out a little bit then I'm gonna take <clears throat> about six inches and not even that about four inches and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this down and just tie this in a knot on the top of the knot of this bow. I'm going to double tie the knot just like that. And I'm going to spread these out a little bit. And this doesn't stress me out when I get little fringes like that because I kind of like that when it fringes. I might make this other side fringe a little just so that it looks like it's supposed to look like that. Except I don't really like those little guys. So I'm not gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the dark red so that I only have the gold left. I need some sharper scissors. I sharpen my scissors. See on this side it just comes out and then you get the gold and that's what I want. And then I'm going to take glue dot. And then I'm just going to kind of mess around with it until I get it to where I want it. This just needed a little bit of you can this one I only tied two I guess I thought I tied three so I just tied that in a knot this one I tied three so you can do it either way but essentially you get the same thing this one I realize I've done a little more um, pine I hope you enjoyed this cute 
and quick little tutorial for Tis the Season. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, let me know. Uh, thanks for joining the club and I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Thanks for watching the Wonder Basement videos. I appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with me. Please click like and subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you check the bell so that you get um, notifications of new content when it's uploaded. I'll see you soon.